Welcome to Information Technology Fundamentals. The focus of this lecture is going to be on working with device interfaces. You'll need to be able to distinguish the different peripheral graphics and networking interfaces and how they are used. You also need to know how to install and configure the different types of input devices. When you look at the backside of a desktop computer or around the edges of a laptop computer, you're going to see a variety of different types of connectors. For computer or IT fundamentals, you should be able to uh, identify these uh, by sight and know what they do. So in this uh, picture, we have a, a HDMI ports, DVI ports, SATA ports, USB ports, uh, our RJ45 connector for networking, and our audio ports. We'll go through these in a little more detail. USB is one of the most common types of connectors on computers. It stands for the Universal Serial Bus. There are a wide variety of connectors with different um, different specifications. So we'll see at the beginning here, we have your standard USB ports, uh, your USB, uh, micro, your mini, and your USB-C ports. Now, USB has been modified over the years. The original specification, known as 1.1, was relatively slow at 12 megabytes. Then we had USB 2.0, which had a much faster speed at 480. USB 3.0 brought us, brought us 5 gigabytes per second, and USB 3.1 doubled that to 10 gigabytes. Now, what's not mentioned on this slide is each one of these USB specifications also has a power rating with it that has changed over the, uh, through each specification. Now, for the uh, IT fundamentals um, exam, you aren't going to know that, but practically it is important to realize that there are power specifications for each one. Firewire is very similar to USB. Um, it was never widely adopted and is a designed primarily for video transfer. It has a data rate uh, originally of 400 megabytes, uh, but now there are FireWire 800 and FireWire 1600, which give you uh, much faster uh, data transfer speeds. They also come in different power ratings and uh, different types of ports uh, on the screen are your typical FireWire uh, Plugs. All computers have some type of graphic device that is used to generate the video signal that goes to the display. Many motherboards and in fact um, laptop computers have this uh, graphic driver or graphic uh, processor built right into the motherboard. Although uh, for certain uh, uses this is not a good enough or not powerful enough to perform. Uh, the great example of that, of course, is gaming and also rendering for uh, video. So both laptops and desktop computers have the ability to have a graphic card added to it. These are typically referred to as a GPU. Um, they'll be listed with processing speeds and RAM, just like you uh, would see for a typical computer. Some of the uh, terms we're going to see associated with graphic devices are going to be resolution, which is going to be a, a number that tells how many pixels are on a screen. Uh, and then color depth, how many, how many different sh uh, colors are able to be displayed. And then we'll go through, uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, VGA standards uh, which relate to um, the resolution as well. Right now you'll see monitors are usually widescreen or 16 by 10. The old square versions were the standard uh, 4 by 3, but you really don't run into those anymore. And now, of course, we're getting screens that have uh, high definition and also 4K screens and uh, much higher than that are available at the moment. So let's get 
go through some of the different types of connectors for video. HDMI is probably the mostly widely used at the moment. It has enough bandwidth for uh, 4K. Importantly, uh, it carries audio as well. It has a couple of different connectors, including mini and micro connectors. Uh, for their use for smaller devices. Display port is also a, a very uh, upcoming technology. Uh, it goes along with the Apple's Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt's been around for several iterations. It's up to Thunderbolt 3 at the moment. And uh, Thunderbolt 3 actually uses what looks like a USB-C uh, interface. So it is a, a lot more universal. Right now, if you bought an Apple computer, you're going to find it has USB-C connectors on it only, and everything gets connected through there. You can uh, add a lot of things, uh, including extra monitors, to uh, DVI is an older technology now. Um, it came before HDMI. Uh, interesting thing about it is it carry, is able to carry both analog and digital signal. If you look at the end of it, it has a lot of pins and it has two sections uh, to it. And depending on what signal it's carrying, it only uses some of the pins. So you can have analog and digital running through the same um, uh, through the same cable. Now, unlike the other uh, the Thunderbolt and the uh, DisplayPort and the uh, HDMI, they all had a variety of different connectors. The DVI only has one connector, and it's almost always white. I think I've only seen white ones, uh, but there might be some black ones out there too. Pretty easy to identify by color. The oldest technology we use is going to be VGA. It's typically blue, it has 15 ports, it's strictly analog. It came along with the cathode ray tube, although many, many uh, uh, TVs and other uh, monitors still support this technology, uh, but it's definitely something we're going away from as it doesn't support uh, the high-end displays as the other technologies do. Switching gears, we're going to talk about input devices. Uh, there's really two that we're most familiar with, and that's going to be the keyboard and the mouse. Uh, typically, they connect through a USB connector at the moment, although you can find wireless ones that use Bluetooth, which are pretty convenient. Uh, the old uh, connector, which was a small round one, was called a PS2. Uh, they were color-coded for mice and for keyboards. Uh, you still can find motherboards with those connectors on them, although they're not nearly as common as they used to be. And mice have changed over the years. Your typical mouse you buy right now is going to have a scroll wheel on it for sure, uh, but gaming mice have all kinds of other functions available to them, uh, including uh, uh, keys that you can program to do certain functions. In the desktop publishing and graphics art world, they also frequently make use of the stylus pen along with some type of tablet to draw on. These pens uh, will support uh, not only drawing, but also gesture support so you can click on things and select things. Uh, there's a variety of different stylus pens that accompany those uh, in Windows and actually in an Apple computer, you can configure settings on a mouse. Now, it partly depends on what type of mouse you have uh, as to what features are available to be customized uh, because some have scroll wheels and extra buttons, so you'd be able to uh, customize those. But importantly, um, you can choose to use your mouse right-handed or left-handed. On the screen here, you see the mouse properties dialog box, which is accessed through the control panel on a Windows computer. And here you can decide which button is going to be your primary click and which button is going to be your secondary click. So if you have someone who's left-handed, they can flip those buttons around. You can also change your pointers and the direction of scroll for your uh, scroll wheel on, on the mouse. Inside the control panel, there's also options for configuring a keyboard. Um, a standard keyboard, there's not a whole lot of options. Mostly you have the repeat delay and the repeat rate. So how fast when you hold down the button before it starts just sending a string of characters. 
And in um, you, you can also choose the area or region of the world because a keyboard that is set up for United States English is actually has a different keyboard arrangement or buttons than on one that's for the UK or anywhere else in the world. So you need to make sure that your your um, keyboard matches the correct region with your computer. Now on a USB keyboard, that happens automatically and you don't have to do much. If you're using one with a PS2 plug, you might actually have to go in here and configure it. The pen and stylus also have configuration options inside the Windows control panel. I think almost all notebook computers, uh, tablets, and um, phones currently have Bluetooth built into them. Many uh, desktop computers do as well. A Bluetooth network is going to be defined as a personal area network, meaning it is just devices connected in a very short, uh, a very close range to, to you. So it's your own personal network. Uh, Bluetooth is up to 10 meters. Bluetooth has uh, come out with new specifications over the years uh, that have begun to uh, increase the range and speed of it. When we put our Bluetooth device into discovery mode and it pairs with other devices, we don't have to tell it that the that our phone is connecting to a headset or to our car and how to use those devices. It automatically discovers and configures itself to work with those. So that is what is meant by self-discovery and self-configuration. Two other forms of communications that are being used right now are RF and near field communications. RF would be uh, one of those badges that are used typically to get into a building. You wave the badge in front of it and the door unlocks. Inside your badge is a small little antenna and a little chip and the energy from the reader actually activates the chip and sends a a code back to it and it tells it oh that ba that's badge number 100 and it's allowed to come in. We can use it for badge readers, it's used a lot for inventory and some other things, uh, but one of the things that RF uh, badges don't need uh, is a battery. Near field communication is what's used right now for Apple Pay, Samsung Pay. So you pull up your uh, card and you hold your device very close to the uh, register or whatever the device is, and it sends out a signal and it communicates. And right now it's used for contactless payment and it has to be really close. Uh, they say two inches here, but I don't think it, I, I think you have to be closer than that for it to work effectively. As we discussed in a previous lecture, uh, we're going to have network interface cards, uh, both wired and wireless. The NIC for the wired card is typically going to use an RJ45 jack with a twisted pair cable that connects to, uh, probably goes to a switch or a router of some sort, or perhaps a wall port. Uh, the wireless card will also be considered a network interface card. If we wanted to go old school, we would uh, pull up the telephone jack, or, which is the RJ11 jack. You probably can still buy a computer or a laptop that have the ability to plug into an analog wall outlet and send faxes and modems. However, it's not used very often anymore. And the DSL digital subscriber line is going to use a similar jack, but you would notice that it sends a digital signal so it can't be interchanged or plugged directly into an old style phone and have it work. So just to review, we looked at peripheral devices, graphic devices, network interfaces, uh, uh, wireless connectors, and how they work. You should know how to install and configure these devices. And one of the things you should notice from this lecture and probably actually out there in real life is that you can't, the, the connectors are different enough that you can't for instance plug a VGA cord into a DVI port. They look differently uh, enough and there's no no way to uh, accidentally plug them into the wrong thing. That will wrap up this lecture and we'll see you in the next one.